Director Pablo Lorraine's biopic Spencer, based on Diana, Princess of Wales, has the title character being played by Kristen Stewart, and fans and critics have had a lot to say about many aspects of the film, how the late princess has been portrayed, and the depiction of the royal family. Today we'll be discussing the good, the bad, all of it. Now I'm bringing you all the latest news and updates on your favourite movies and TV shows, so in order to stay up to date, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell to not miss a single thing. Director Pablo Lorraine is responsible for another biopic, Jackie, which covers similar themes to Spencer, but based on the First Lady of the United States. Lorraine definitely has a type of movie he enjoys making, but this time has been met with more criticism. In my last video covering season 5 of Netflix's The Crown, I put the question out to you guys what you thought of the film, and I have never seen such polarising reviews. Either it was the film of the year, or an offensive betrayal of Diana's memory. So going in to watch it myself, I really had no idea what to expect. But I'm sorry to half of you because I liked it. A lot. But before I get into the actual film itself, I wanted to take a moment to talk about its poster. These days, with so many movie posters being almost exact copies of each other, the main hero with the supported cast photoshopped in behind them, this poster really stands alone. The contrast of Diana's dress on the black background, it asks a question, and already knowing who Diana is, this image also tells a story, telling you just enough to be interested in seeing the movie, like all great marketing should. Now I'm going to try and keep this review relatively spoiler free, but I highly recommend watching the film first so you can get the references. Let's start with the tone of the film. First thing you notice is the aspect ratio. Reminiscent of movies like Marriage Story, it makes these films seem more like a work of art than a film. Spencer takes this further with stunning symmetrical cinematography as well as a dull colour grading throughout. To be honest, most frames of this film could be captured and hung on a wall. Now, as debated as Spencer is, there is actually little critique of Kristen Stewart's performance, which I really enjoyed. It takes a few scenes to get used to the idea that Stewart is playing this character, as it is quite a test of her acting skills. But Stewart transforms herself, she's becoming quite an outstanding character actress, especially with her expert dialect work. Her Diana voice and accent is just about true to life. Is everybody there? Well, apart from the Majesty, yeah. Speaking of true to life, the controversial discussion really comes from the actual events of the film itself. You soon realise that there is not really any major historical moments covered here, and most of Spencer's runtime sees Diana on her own. And obviously no one can really confirm what happened in her alone time except, well, Diana. I don't agree that this was a betrayal of Diana's memory, as some have said, as I feel the idea of the film is explained before it even starts. Even before the opening shot, we are told this is a fable from a true tragedy. So for me, it was pretty clear that this was just a dramatic interpretation of what a Christmas with the royal family could look like. And I think it does a great job in at least capturing how Diana must have felt during this time in her life. It would have been easy to cash in on Diana's death and make a movie about that, but this movie doesn't feel that way at all. Yes, Diana has her erratic and dramatic moments, which I can see could be controversial, but all in all it's a respectful reflection of the Princess of Wales. At least I think so. It was really interesting to see how the royal family was portrayed though. They are like dolls, they hardly even talk and barely move. Obviously a strong metaphor in contrast to Diana's emotional state of mind. This lifeless display actually turns into a horrific scene at the Christmas Eve dinner table. Her Majesty looks legitimately terrifying, and we really start to understand how Diana could have felt in that situation. The climax of this scene showing Diana being overwhelmed and trying to break free of this life. Another notable scene was between Diana and Charles in the snooker room. The individual shots of each of them show such a wide angle that it makes them seem miles away from each other, and both completely isolated. Obviously a great way of showing the emotional distance between them. This scene also proved that the sign in the kitchen saying to keep noise to a minimum as they can hear you rings true, as Diana's whereabouts and secrets travel fast. This film is expertly scored both with music and sound design. The noir-esque score, led by lonely strings and trumpets, complements the scenes perfectly. But my personal favourite scenes are when you would usually expect a tense musical score, and you're instead met by loud silence. Which leads me to the sound design. 
the atmosphere is really thick in this movie and you really feel you are spending time in a huge house out in the country at Christmas time. This feeling for me came from the concentration on ambient sounds and textures. Taking into consideration the performances, the costumes, the emotional yet beautiful storyline, this film is really hard for me to fault, but apparently it's not for everyone and I'm wanting to hear what you guys thought. What did you like? What didn't you like? Let me know, I'll be down there in the comments. But if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for weekly videos covering your favourite movies and TV shows. If you subscribe during this video, then welcome aboard, and if you had a good time hanging out, then hit that like button. This is Matt Rogers, and that is all.